Have you ever said something that you later regretted and wished that you could take it all back and it never happened again? Well, you know and I know it doesn't work that way. However, in this episode, I want to teach you how to apply pause principles as we both learn to watch our mouths. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Welcome back to another episode of Bishop Littman Live. I am so happy to share this teaching with you today. If you're new to our channel, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment. I'd love to know what your views are on the teaching today. Well, in today's teaching, I want to piggyback on our last episode from our Philippians series. In our last episode, we talked about chapter 2 of Philippians, verse number 5, or verse number 12, rather, through verse number 18. And there we saw the outline of the passages of scripture. We saw that we have the eternal responsibilities of honoring the Lord and holy living. Then we also saw in verse 13, the internal resource, which is help from the Lord who lives on the inside of us, who enables us to do those things that he's actually called us to do. Finally, we looked at the external resources or reactions, and that is wholesome language in verse 14 through 18. And that's where I want to pick up today. You see, because in verse number 14 through 16, Paul teaches us how to behave once we've been saved. And a major point that Paul makes to us in verse 14 and 16 is our teaching today, watch your mouth. Now let's look back at verse number 14 of Philippians chapter 2 and kind of walk through it. I want to show you three principles, and then we'll close with prayer. He says to us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, in everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Wait a minute. Don't touch that dial. This is a message you need to hear. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Here's our first lesson about watching our mouth. Paul tells us, number one, you have to control your words. Control your words. We've all, at one point or another, had a grandmother or mother or father or grandfather to give us that warning that preceded some kind of capital punishment. You better watch your mouth. Well, the same is true for us, even in our adulthood, even as the children of God today. And that's what Paul is teaching the church at Philippi. You have to control your words. Now, Paul gives us two analogies of how we misuse our words. First, he says, stay away from complaining. Then he says, also stay away from arguing. Now, complaining is when you find something negative to talk about. Now, let's be real. We can all find something negative that's wrong in this world. There's a lot wrong with politics, with religion, even with the church. There's a lot wrong with ourselves for that matter. And of course, we all know there's a lot wrong with our neighbors. However, Paul says that we should stay away from negative talk. Now, complaining is when you express your negative views and opinions on everything. However, it goes beyond that because where do these expressions come from? They are born out of a heart of contemplation. What does that mean? It is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. It is from your heart that your words are formed and shaped. Your heart is the reservoir for your mouth. And if you think about a computer, it has a motherboard, it has RAM, which is random access memory. But then there is a printer that is connected to that computer. Your mouth is the printer and it only prints out what you have processed in your computer, which is your brain, your random access memory, which is your heart. And so therefore, the things that we concentrate on will eventually make their way up out of our mouth. That's why we have to be very careful to guard our hearts and our thoughts and our mind. Because our mouths will tell on us. 
Paul says, don't misuse your words in terms of complaining. If you were to take 24 hours of your life and if you were able to map out eight hours of sleep, but then the 16 hours that you were awake, how much time did you spend thinking and speaking negative things? How much time did you spend complaining about the paper boy didn't throw the paper in the right place? There's a fuzzy picture on my channel and I just paid my cable bill. I mean, just on and on. The line at the grocery store is just entirely too long. On and on and on and on and on, some of us go with finding something negative to say. And of the 16 hours that you are awake, how much time is spent on negative talk and thoughts versus positive thoughts and talk? Now, why am I harping on this? It's very simple. You see, our words shape our attitude. Our attitude impacts our thinking and our thinking ultimately impacts our health. When you concentrate and dwell on dark, negative, dismal thoughts, it impacts your health and causes your body to not release those healthy hormones that bring joy and bring peace to you. And so your words are very important. That's why the power of death and life lies in the tongue. And you have to choose life because when you speak life, you experience life. When you speak degradation, negativity, you experience degradation and negativity. So Paul says, don't mis misuse your words, one, by always constantly complaining. Paul says also, don't misuse your words, number two, by engaging in combat with other people. Arguing is a combat from one person to another. It's where negativity and negative energy has pent up and built up. And now there is an explosion of all previous emotions, all previous considerations, all previous thoughts. And if you're not careful, you will get into an argument with someone and start referring to people that are dead and gone. You know, like, your mama was that way. You understand. Those are fighting words. Paul says, as a believer, keep that kind of language out of your mouth. Stop looking for things to argue about. Stop looking for things to complain about. Watch your mouth. Control your words. Well, what else does Paul say to us? Paul says also to us now, number two, consider your witness. Consider your witness. Verse number 15. So that no one can speak a word of blame against you. You are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of people who are crooked and stubborn. Now, Paul says why we should control our words is that we must consider our witness. Now, what does that mean? Consider your witness. Well, your witness is your testimony to the world, but it's not the one that you stand up and take 15 minutes at the end of a church service to tell because you want the microphone. That's not your real testimony. Your real testimony is how you live your everyday life before people. That's your real testimony. And Paul says that we ought to control our words because we are considering our witness. That is to say, we are considering how others view us in this world. Now, don't get it twisted. Paul is not saying that he wants you to consider how other, others view you in the sense of whether they think you're pretty or handsome or whether they think you're fluent or brilliant or not so bright or attractive or unattractive, what he's really saying is that we ought to consider our witness for Christ because we are the representation of Jesus Christ in this world. And so when people see us and interact with us, it is the same as them seeing a representation of Christ and interacting with the representation of Christ. So if our witness is jacked up, the way they see the Lord is jacked up. So we ought to consider our words and our ways, that's our complaining and our arguments, we ought to consider not doing that because 
it impacts our witness for Christ. I mean, think about it. If you are a member of your church and you have on a I Love Jesus t-shirt with the church name on the back of the shirt and your pastor's name in big bold letters and you're standing in the grocery store cursing and arguing and fussing and complaining and getting on everybody else's nerves and getting on everybody's case and uh, telling everybody off and all of that, your witness is ruined. And not only is your witness ruined, the way that the world will see Jesus is ruined and the way that the world will see your pastor and your church is also ruined. And so we must consider our witness. But Paul says a third thing to us at the end of verse number 15 that is so powerful. And that is he tells us we have to continue our work, continue our work. Look what he says. This is an imperative statement. It is an instruction. It is not an option. It is a demand. You are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God. That's your assignment. He says, you are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of people who are crooked and stubborn. And I notice this. We're in a world full of people that are crooked and stubborn. Paul says you be the opposite of the people who are crooked and and stubborn. How stubborn can we be sometimes? How crooked? That's another story. All right. So he says <laughs> that we are to live a clean, innocent life as children of God in a dark world. Notice what he says we are to do. Shine out among them like a beacon lights up. When you think of a beacon, if you've ever been on a, a, a boat or a ship in the dark, you've seen this light that would be just sending out all kind of illumination in that dark ocean or that dark sea or that dark lake. And it helps to give navigation to those who are traveling in the dark. And what a great analogy that is for this passage, because those who don't know Christ are traveling in darkness through the sea of life. Your job and my job is to be that beacon that gives illumination for the way that shows the pathway to go to help them avoid danger and the pitfalls of life. And so Paul says to us that we should shine out among them like beacons of light. And our job, verse 16, is to hold out to them the word of life. Wow. Our words should be words of life. And when we hold out our words, that is not complaining, not arguing, we are showing the world the way to go. We're showing the world the way to live. So you got to watch your mouth. You got to choose words that are positive, not negative. Think about your time budget of the 16 hours of a day. How are you using it? What thoughts are you dwelling on? And what do you need to do differently? in order for God to be pleased with your ways and for your ways to align with his ways. <laughs> I'm glad you joined me. I know this is a tough teaching today, but we all have got to watch our mouths. Hey, I'd love to share more studies with you. If you're interested in joining my e-class, I'd love to welcome you. We provide free materials for studying, study guides for our Bible study series, and I'd love for you to join my e-class. Simply send an email with your name requesting to join the e-class, and the email address is very simply clearstudies at gmail.com. Again, clearstudies at gmail.com. Also, I'd love to pray with you and pray for you. You can send me your confidential prayer request to Bishop Prayer with Bishop at gmail.com. Again, prayer with Bishop at gmail.com. Well, I'd like to close in prayer with you and thank you again so much for joining me on Bishop Lippman Live. Let me pray with you and pray for you now. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come together again. Bless your people. Give us strength. Give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the fortitude to watch our mouths. Let our witness be a strong, beacon light in this dark, mean, and evil world. Forgive us for every time that our words have not matched up with your ways and your words. Cleanse us, purify our hearts, that we may ever glorify you. 
And it's in the mighty, majestic, matchless name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. Hey, thanks again for watching. I'm glad to have you here with me today. I'll catch you on the next episode.